All right. So thanks so much for coming on. Um, this is session one of however many that we feel like we need to make this work. Um, social media is something that is very complicated, um, but can be made very simple if you follow the right steps and you um, really make it more simple. Is it like blurring for anyone before I forget? No. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry. We just moved, finished our renovation. And so we just moved in. This is my first time actually doing a Zoom here. So it's really exciting. Um, but something that is really exciting about social media is it can be used as a way and a, as a tool um, to grow your business. To grow your business. Um, and so the, the key word with this is tool, okay? It is not meant to be the only way that you grow your business, you still need to do income producing activities. You still need to do all the things that are necessary to grow your business. Social media is a tool. Okay. So we're going to be training on this and we're going to do one every Sunday at nine, um, just like 20, 30 minutes of social media training because so many people don't understand social media. And I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't for a long time. I hated Facebook. I hated it. I hated Instagram. I refused to use hashtags because I'm one of those people that if the masses is doing it, I'm not going to. Um, and then I realized how beneficial it could be once I started just developing my own voice and finding unique ways to show people who I am. There's literally people who have never met me. I received this, this stupid girl. I received this message yesterday um, where she's never met me in person. We met through a book club. Um, I friended her because I really liked what she had to say. I really liked um, her personality. And that's kind of how I add to my Facebook too. But um, she messaged me yesterday and said, every time she feels like giving up, she finds hope in my Facebook and she finds reasons to keep going. And I, that I am her personal Wonder Woman. And it made me cry because I was like, I've literally never met you. And so we have a phone date to talk tomorrow because I was like, listen, Linda, listen, like, obviously her name's not Linda. I love that phrase, but, um, we need to talk. Like, I want to get to know you better because someone that says something like that to you and feels like this is how you have impacted their lives in such a way that they say something like that is someone that you need to get to know better. And so most of the way that I recruit or grow customers is through Facebook, but I make connections there and then I grow it by the good old phone call, which used to give me like the worst kind of anxiety. And now I'm using it as a way to really get to know people because when I first started this business, um, I knew no one. I had no idea how to do network marketing. I had just moved to Michigan for love. Love makes you do crazy things uh, from San Diego. And um, I had been sick um, for a year, well, a year and a half before I found Q. And so when you go through illnesses, a lot of times you, your friendships and your relationships kind of take a back burner. And, um, unfortunately you, you lose touch with a lot of people, even your family. And so, um, I realized later on how much of a, an amazing tool it could be, but also I just wanted to inspire people. I wanted to share my struggles. I wanted to be able to let people know that they weren't alone because, you may or may not know this about me, um, but I used to be extremely suicidal. I went through a lot of really hard things. I had borderline personality disorder as well as other uh, mental illnesses. And there was a day where I was very, very seriously um, planning to drive my car off a bridge. And I saw a post on Instagram that said that you are uniquely made, that God uniquely made you and you have a purpose in this world. And you don't know what that purpose is yet, but you will. And it was just some random person that I followed that was motivational, um, motivational. I need to learn how to turn it off, uh, quotes and stuff. And it completely saved my life. And there were several instances like that. So social media can be a incredible, incredible tool. Um, but again, keep in mind, the word tool. If you're doing all of your growing on Facebook, you're probably not growing quite as much as you could. If you're using it as a tool to funnel people in and find out who you'd be interested to work with, because one of the great things about our business is we get to choose who we work with. We don't have to work with anyone. If I see someone that their energy just 
it drives me nuts and I have no interest and I don't feel like it makes me a better person. Um, I've got to figure out how to turn this off. I'm sorry, guys. I am learning. So I'm learning technology. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and what this is, this episode is called is Facebook facelift. Um, Taryn came up with that idea and I'm just going to show different profiles and go over a little bit. And then I'm going to turn that off. So my Facebook doesn't keep beeping in. Um, if anyone has any advice on how to turn that off, please message me after because I don't even know how to turn off the flasher on my phone. So let me see here. Okay. All right. So I put this together and just because I'm showing this doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad Facebook. Um, there's just things that you can do to make your Facebook more attractive. So what you, there's a couple of different steps in this. And, um, the purpose of this is to train you guys a little bit. It's very basic. Um, I'm not going to go like, I'll talk more about algorithms and stuff like that in a couple of weeks, but this is to give you an idea of where to start. I'm going to give you some homework to do between now and Sunday. These aren't going to run any longer than 30 minutes. Um, and so something that's really big, and I didn't even know that this was something that you like would boost your Facebook and stuff. I just saw other people um, doing this where they gave a description right here. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. And so I've done several things now that have um, boosted my Facebook because think about it. When you friend new people, when you add someone from a book club, um, when you find someone from a mom group, when you find a a dog mom, whatever you want to do, and you add them into your Facebook because you genuinely want to get to know them, the first thing they're going to see is this right here. This is the very first thing. And this cat person, uh, we are not friends. I just randomly found a Facebook profile that didn't actually have any pictures or anything like that. Um, so something about Facebook is even if you reconnect with an old friend from high school, like you want to be able to give them an idea of who you are. And so for a long time, especially since Zach and I are newlyweds still, we uh, just hit our six month in marriage. And I was like, I don't wanna just be a picture of me. Like I want it to be me and Zach. And um, I was advised and mentored several times, like having a picture of just me makes a big difference. And so I was like, well, fine. I'm gonna put it as my cover photo. Um, and the reason is because when People, especially when you start growing your business and you start um, essentially being attractive on social media, um, and I don't mean like in a um, like a relationship way, I mean like attractive, like you look at their Facebook and it makes you smile. You look at their Facebook and it inspires you. You look at their Facebook and you find something new. You all have someone like that. And if you don't, you need to find people like that because how much time do we spend on Facebook every day? A lot. We spend a lot of time. And if you're smart and if you're a part of Q, which you all are, then you will use that time on Facebook to help make you money and help people change their lives. And so utilizing the tool of Facebook or Instagram um, can be very, very beneficial. And so your profile picture needs to be just you, okay? Um, I came across one that it was their dog, which while that pit was adorable, I have no idea what this person looks like. And I don't even know if it's a real Facebook um, because people have dog Facebooks now. I'm not making one for my dogs, but people do. They have their own catagrams, and I just, I think I just made that word up. Maybe it's real. I don't know. But they have profiles specifically designed for their animals. And so what you want to do with your profile picture is it needs to be you. Something that, and you know, you can change it often if you want or keep it the same. It doesn't matter, but keeping it as yourself is really important. And in the background, you know, this one right here is a tree. Like that gives me absolutely no information about them. I have no idea like who they are, what they're like. It gives me no indication. In my profile picture, you can see that I'm at the beach and I love the beach. And maybe you don't necessarily, um, you don't necessarily know like what it is about me that like, oh, I love the beach. Like one of my 10 goals in, or 10 dreams in 10 years that you do through like a Rachel Hollis thing is um, being able, like I want to have a house on the beach. It's always been a dream of mine. It's what I really, really want to do. And so if someone says, oh, I love your profile picture, 
then it gives me the opportunity to be like, thanks. It's reminding me of why I work so hard because I want a house on the beach. And it opens the gateway to talk about my business. And that's like you drip on people. Like you take a little cue dropper and you just drip on them. And that's what social media is, is a way to drip on people. One thing that you absolutely do not want to do for the love of God, please don't do this, is please don't take a selfie with your product and put it as your profile. And then you make your bio, oh, I just love my relax. Like, please don't do that because you are going to turn away so many potential people. You could totally attract a complete rock star, but if you see something like that, it's going to detach people because you're not, no one wants to be sold to. People want to be helped. They don't want to be sold to. And so profile picture is very important about being about you. And then, um, I, like I said, I used to hate Facebook. And now that I've done this, it's kind of like, it's like a fun game. Like, what can I do with the algorithms? How can I help someone? Um, what can I ch share about myself? Um, what if someone's walking that line of where I used to be and I want to help them walk off that line? Um, I am very real on my Facebook. Um, I am very intentional but I am very real. I share if I'm struggling and I share if I'm not, but when I'm struggling, I don't ever post like my life sucks. I hate everything. I hate everyone picture of the gray sky. Like if I'm struggling, I post something that helps me get through it or is real about it or how I'm working through it or how I'm not going to give up because there's nothing special about me. There's not a single thing that's special about me. The only thing about me that makes me different than other people is that one, I don't give up. And two, I always find a solution to everything. And that is something that all of us, a skill that all of us can acquire. I used to be terrified of speaking. I'm an extroverted introvert. Facebook has really helped me come out of my comfort zone. There's a lot of things that we don't, we really, we think that people, we put people up on this like pedestal. I do it on Facebook all the time of people that I admire. And in reality, they're just people. And we can all learn to take these tools and use them to our advantages. And so your cover photo should be something that people see. And it's like, like something that sparks their interest, something that defines who you are. Um, like for me, being a wife is a huge part of my life. I've always wanted to be a good wife to a good husband. And for me, if you click on that, if you click on that photo, which most people do, because I'm in my wedding dress and especially a lot of girls like want to click and see what the wedding dress looks like you will see what I wrote about it. And I wrote about how um, my husband's always helping me pick up my crown when I let it fall or, and that's what I want to do for other women. And like, it defines like who I am. Um, and then under my profile, uh, which you can see in the cat one, it, I think it's just like ice, which is pretty, but it literally tells me nothing about this person. Nothing. Like it, it could be a family, like some pictures of their favorite books. It could be um, a picture of their family. It could be their dogs, but it's ice. It's a cool photo. It literally never tell. It doesn't tell me anything about it. And books would be great since it says that she worked at a children's library, which is really cool. Um, so then under it, okay, you notice how mine has a little blurb, I guess is the word. I don't know. Blurb about myself and the other one's literally blank. So I know that she likes to read and that's about all I need. That's about all I know or at least that she worked at a library. I don't even know if she likes to read. And so for me, um, like I said, being a wife is one of the most important things in my life. Um, and so wife is first and then encourager of women because I don't care if it doesn't directly benefit me. I want to see people win. I want to see women win. I want to encourage other women, even if there has nothing attached to me, even if it actually takes away from me, I want to make sure that others are encouraged. Um, I love memes. Baby Yoda is like it. Baby Yoda is a stuff. Um, and so I, I love sharing memes and I, a lot of times put that in my stories. Right. And so I'll go over stories. I'm going to do um, a session just on stories, but I don't want to overwhelm people that they maybe haven't really done social media. Um, and then I love reading. I'm always reading. Um, my husband always, he, uh, when he helped me move, huge, huge boxes of books and almost broke his back. And so I'm always posting my stories or my personal about like encouraging books or audio books, like for my team. Um, I, I always, every month I'm like, Hey, read this book. And that's because it helps me develop, you know, Jake Spencer, um, I actually have it on my whiteboard and it says Q science is, is nothing more than a personal growth plan with a compensation plan attached. 
And that could not be more true. He said that the other night on one of our trainings and I was like jaw on the floor because I have noticed that trend as I've, if I've, as I have grown in my personal development, as I have shared my life with other people, my business has grown. My family has grown because really my team is like my family. Um, and so the next thing I'm talking about is healthy living. All right. Which that's kind of mentors the last one, but I want people to see me as a person before they see me as a businesswoman. I want them to almost like, um, like hook. Okay. Like someone interests you. If the first thing you see when you go to someone's profile is CBD queen, I'm sorry, unless I'm like trying to recruit them, I'm going to click off because I don't want to be sold to. And I, that's one of those people that usually the first message you get is, Hey, I don't know if you're interested in my products or doing a party for me, but I would love to have you share this and tell me what you think. And all you got to do is pay $80 to try it. Like I've legitimately gotten messages like that. I get one every day now, just about from makeup, soap, CBD. Okay. First off, please don't do that. Don't use Facebook in that way. <laughs> like actually build a relationship. Even if it's just for two days, you can build a lot in two days. Um, and so healthy living is extremely important to me. That doesn't tell them anything you want to create. You want to use social media as a way to create curiosity. Okay. Because if they're curious, they'll reach out to you. They'll message you. They'll ask you questions. They'll give you the opportunity to drip Q on them. And so the second thing, or I guess, well, that I obviously can't count. I don't know. It's like one, two, three, four, five. The fifth thing is stigma shifter. Um, and that is something that I made up um, because I want to change the stigma surrounding chronic illness, invisible illness, mental health, um, network marketing. I used to have a really bad stigma around network marketing. Um, just anything that people have this idea that they think they know something. And I want to challenge that idea in a very diplomatic way. I don't mean like, Hey, let's talk politics and me jump down your throat. I mean, like I want to actually grow and learn and change the stigma surrounding certain things. And so that's what my team is called as stigma shifters. And, um, I feel like every day we are changing people's lives and we're changing some kind of stigma that's surrounding things. And I am a mentor. Okay. So I put mentor, I didn't put upline, um, which I don't even like that word. Um, I feel like upline is very disconnected. It's very like, if you're using that in your chats, please remove that from when you're introducing three way chats or when you're just talking about someone you don't upline is not attractive. Honestly, if somebody says upline, I cringe internally and you know, not everyone's going to agree with everything that I'm saying, having to do with social media and everybody has their own way of doing things. And that's cool, but what it's working for me. Um, and so being a mentor is extremely important. So anyone that's like in, an entrepreneur or in any kind of network marketing, they're going to see this and they go, okay, because this is what I did is I looked at other people's profiles and I'm like, what's going to grab their attention? They say that the first thing and the last thing is what grabs people's attention. And when it's that quick, that's, that's a sentence of information that tells you so much about me. It tells you that I love to laugh that I love um, being married to my hunky husband, that I love reading, that I love trying to improve myself and my health in every way, whether that, whether that mean a personal trainer or eating better food or supplementation or CBD or whatever. Um, and then I love testing the ideas of other and really trying to change the world. And I love mentoring people. I love changing people's lives in that way. And mentorship to me doesn't mean come join my business. Mentorship to me means how can I help enrich every aspect of your life, whether that be family, whether it be personal growth, whether that I give you a, a book suggestion that is just off the chain and you can't put it down and it's a fiction book. I want people to come to my profile and see truly who I am. And it's really important um, to give people that idea of who you are, because again, when you're in those mom groups or you're in um, like I'm in a lot of chronic illness support groups. When you friend people, they go and see these things and you can be the difference between a light and someone's life. I mean, my entire social media is the way it is because others had such a huge impact on me that I wanted to be better myself. And so obviously not everyone uses social media. Um, my husband kind of uses it. He's like, well, I don't need to put my life on Facebook and that's fine. 
that's what he likes to do. But for me, I want to be that person that one person sees my Facebook and maybe they're changed their mind about a dark path that they're walking down. And so something that I do, um, and if anyone has any questions, you can put it in and I'll always address questions at the end. Um, so if you do have questions, don't hesitate and I'll just get to it what I can. And I'm going to stop screen sharing this so that my Facebook stops trying to message you guys. Okay. All right. So when it comes to social media, again, I'm going to wrap this up, use it as a tool. Okay. Not as your only way to your business. If you make a post today, and you say, oh, that's gonna grow my business. That's, what it, that's what's gonna get me to silver. I promise you, it will maybe get you to executive. And it's gonna grow your following over time, but you don't just make a post and people go, can I please just join your business? I've maybe had one person in the last four months message me off a post and say, I need to know what company you're with because I wanna join it. Literally one. And if you go through my Facebook and you see everything, you're going to see, I don't post all day about Q. People don't even know I'm with Q. I post about my life. I post about different things. But here's the thing. When I do talk about Q in a curiosity driving way, not here's my Excel cream. It helps you with your muscles. It's full spectrum hemp. It's growing in Kentucky. Like if you give everyone all the information, they have no reason to talk to you. And they have no reason. And you think, oh, well, they need my link. Yeah, okay, except that you just put Excel cream up there, they can Google it. Do you want someone else getting the business off of your post? No. So I use the stories a lot. And um, next week, I'm going to talk more about utilizing stories because I'm going to give you guys homework each week. But through your Facebook, you want to attract people. And the biggest thing about that is just posting what you like. So I want you to, um, this week, between now and next Sunday's training, I want you to make three to five posts. I know it seems like a lot. Don't freak out. I don't want a single one of those to be about Q. Do not say Q sciences. Do not post a product picture. Don't do any of those things. Um, I've had several people since our last um, Freedom Movement Saturday training send me audios of, hey, Jada, I started doing what you said, and my Facebook has been blowing up. Like people that knew what I was doing like four months ago are seeing my post now and they're messaging me and asking me about what I was doing because they have no idea. Or, oh, well, we were at that family event and literally like got a message like this. We were at that, I was at a family event, I think it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, three or four months ago. And one of my family members saw a post on my Facebook and now they wanna buy the cream. You know what happened to me? My father-in-law, so I let, my husband and I, we've completely renovated, well, we're still renovating, but we have the entire upstairs to us. We were gonna move out and buy a house after we got married and our my in-laws um, said, well, why are you gonna do that? It's a seller's market and you're gonna pay like $40,000 more than you would for just a normal house <laughs> in a non-seller market. And so we decided to stay here, renovate. We have our own space, condo-like area. and. So I explained that back story because my father-in-law, I see him pretty regularly. I make dinner for them or I let the dogs out or I go and do laundry and I see them. And for nine months, he would not try any of the products, even though he saw the changes in me, even though he heard me talking about it. And one day I was in the kitchen making dinner and he comes home and he says, hey Jada, so, so I saw your Facebook and does that stuff really work? Like you say it works. Like, is your anxiety really better? Are you really sleeping better? And I was like, yeah, my Facebook isn't fake. And since then he has been a loyal customer every single month. And the one time he ran out because he wasn't on auto ship, it was the first month he freaked out. My own father-in-law became a customer because of my Facebook. And I talked to him every day. So the power of social media and doing things the right way um, can be extremely, extremely beneficial, but you have to use it the right way. Don't vomit on people, okay? No one wants to be vomited on, like in real life, obviously, because that's disgusting, but even on social media, I want to 
all the time I go on my Facebook and see people that I'm like, Ooh, I really like her Facebook. And I think I have a feeling that we are going to vibe really well. Like I really like what she's saying and I will just flat out message him and say, Hey, I love your Facebook. Um, I feel like we are very similar and we have very similar personalities. I'm excited to get to know you. And I'm also curious, are you an entrepreneur? And they usually like, I already know they're an entrepreneur because I can tell. Uh, even if I know what company they're with, I still ask and they go, oh yeah, I'm with this great company and this and that. And I go, oh, that's awesome. I don't sit there and go, well, I'm with Q and we're way better. And our products are full spectrum hemp from Kentucky and they're 85% absorption and our comp plants way better than yours. And we have Jake Spencer and Taryn Sarconi. I say, oh, that's awesome. What do you love about it? And I talk about them and I let them talk. And you know what's happened time and time and time again, find out a little while into the relationship that they're not even happy. So that's all a front. And that is the power of social media. Um, and so next week, I'm going to talk about stories. So what I want you to do this week, I'm going to recap for you, is I want you to go on your Facebook and post three to five. Okay, usually evenings are better. Find, kind of play with it. Find out like what's better for you. Um, see when you have the most interaction. You'll be able to tell. And post a quote that you love. Whatever you do, do not share someone else's post that will, and I'll talk about algorithms in probably three or four weeks. It will lower, um, if you don't know what an algorithm is, it's basically what Facebook uses to determine if people are going to see your Facebook or not. If you are sharing, like for example, Morris, because I see him right there on the screen. If Morris shares this awesome story about Mannix and his ADHD and the story going through all that, it may be an amazing story, but if I go hit the share button, my interaction is going to be so low. Usually I have around 60 to 100 likes on anything I post. It would be about three to maybe seven because Facebook would hide it because they want you to be original. And that's not like a, oh, people don't like me and my Facebook sucks. Like literally it's a numbers game through technology. And so what I want you to do is three to five posts, different times. Don't share it. If you see a photo, like, I don't make up the Yoda memes, okay? I definitely go to people's thing and go to where it, orig it originally is. Then I go save photo and then I put it up. <laughs> and if it's someone that I know that they made it, I'll credit them. I'll little edit in and I'll go at Morris Morley. He posted the Yoda one, right? It's that easy, but you need to be original. Post a photo of your kids. Post a photo of a book you're reading right now. Post a photo of you just finished working out or just share a quote or like everyone just had Valentine's day, right? Have you noticed that your algorithms are boosted that you're posting original Valentine pictures and people are like coming out of the woodworks that you hadn't talked to for a while. That's what happens when you're attractive on social media. And honestly, I don't even think about it at this point. Um, I just post what I like. I post, um, things I care about. I post things that I think that may, uh, boost someone's confidence or help them grow as a person. And then we'll talk about when to post Q next week. Okay. So between now and then no queuing. Okay. If you want to grow and fix your Facebook and the last thing is go through your Facebook and clean it up. If you have posted pictures of your relax, go through and hide it or delete it. Anything that doesn't have good interaction, especially the, the first 15 post, and I'll, sh I'll just, hopefully it's not going to open my 15 billion messages. I'll show you guys my last couple of posts just real quick, which you can see it on my Facebook. All y'all are friends with me, with, with me I believe. Um, and I'll just briefly show you the first things you see when... Oh my God, I'm so not tech savvy. Okay, let's try this thing. Ah, okay. Ha ha, here we go. All right. So the first things you see when you go to my Facebook is picture of me and my hubby, right? And then Valentine's Day. And I don't post every day all the time. Sometimes I don't feel like it and I'll make little drafts. Um, like, see, this is a memory. Okay. This is a memory of my grandma. 
who passed away in December. Um, and instead of me even sharing my own memory, I just screenshotted it and put it up as an original thing. The dancing one, that one got like a ton of interaction, but just, this is what people see. I love the office. This is what people see when they friend you or they go and look at your Facebook for the first time in a long time. I mean, have you ever had a random friend from high school message you and be like, hey, how are you doing? I was thinking about you today and you just, I was talking about you or whatever. They're gonna go through your Facebook. And then I'll go through and like, this is like as hempy as I get. Like that is the most hemp picture I think I've ever posted <laughs> or at least in a long time. And so just different things is what they're going to see. And then now I'm going to be bored. I don't want to look through Facebook anymore. Unless you down, go down the social media rabbit hole like I did last night and literally looked at someone's stuff all the way back to like last April. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> but um, because I want to see what kind of person they are. I want to get to know them. I want to see if there's someone that I want on my team and then I'll message them. I kind of interview them through social media. So people are doing that to you as well. Whether you know it or you don't, whether you accept it or you don't, I've noticed um, a huge difference in Morris and Alicia's Facebook. Um, since we've been training and working together, their algorithms, their interaction, all of it is greatly improved because they've just done a couple of these little things that have helped boost their Facebook. They're saying just as amazing things, but these changes like not sharing other people's stuff, occasionally using the stories, which again, we'll go over next week, um, being able to post original content and not spamming people. Extremely important, extremely important. So don't spam people. Do you wanna be spammed? Do you wanna be vomited on? No, okay, then don't do it to other people. Um, so I am going to look at the questions. Oh, I think Sonia. Um, Haley, do the photo, the Facebook post have to be a photo? No, they don't. You'll notice a lot on my Facebook that I will do the quotes thing where I go in and I type it and it has to be under a certain amount of words because I can talk a lot. Um, I can write posts that are like 15,000 words if I want to. Um, and so in the quote section, um, you can just go in and type and it has like all those different cool backgrounds and they do different things for different holidays. I use that a lot. So I'll take a quote. Most of the quotes that I put up are like my own that I create um, every now and then it'll be someone else's. <laughs> the every now and then it'll be someone else's. And um, you can put it up that way and that'll boost your algorithms as well because Facebook sees that as original content. And I post about my dog a lot because she's crazy. So um, any other questions? You can unmute yourself if you have one too. And I'm going to stop the recording to answer any questions.